AQA A-level physics, turning points, and this video is about Millikan's experiment. If anybody can, Milli can. That's what I say. So uh, now, 1897, uh, JJ Thompson measured E over M, uh, and we talked a bit about that in the last video. So in 1917, uh, he actually spent years working on this. Uh, but Millikan's experiment, 1917, got a value for little e. And so this American guy, Henry Millikan, uh, and how did he do it? Well, this is the apparatus that he used. And basically, looking at this, you've got two metal plates, and you can put a voltage across these plates. Yeah, a high DC voltage. Now, the plates aren't actually very big. They're only maybe, you know, about 12 millimeters apart, but two metal plates and we can put a big voltage. Yeah, a big voltage across the plates like that. OK. Um, and you get an electric field between the plates, don't you? So if you had the, the top plate positive, then you're going to get an electric field like that. OK, and E equals V over D, where V is the voltage which you can measure. D is the separation of the plates. Uh, then little tiny oil drops in between the plates. So we have an oil spray like an atomizer, you know, spray it and like an aerosol kind of thing. Tiny little droplets come out of there and some of them go into this hole through the top plate. So we've got little oil droplets in between the plates. Now, uh, we charge the oil droplets. Now, some of them may become charged by friction anyway, but um, we can use a gamma source to kind of ionize them, if you like. So the charges become the oil droplets become some of them positive, some of them negative. So we've got some charged oil droplets. OK, and then what we do is we observe, we look at the oil droplets. Now, when the voltage is turned off, then the oil droplets just move downwards and they reach terminal velocity very, very quickly because they are so tiny. They very, very soon reach terminal velocity as they fall through the air uh, and that terminal velocity is is you know less than a millimeter per second as it falls down then we turn on the electric field uh, and what happens is that they move upwards yeah or the ones that we're interested in move upwards and again with a certain terminal velocity v2 because now they're being pulled up by the electric field so little tiny droplets of oil you choose a suitable little drop and you measure its terminal velocity when it's falling downwards with the electric field turned off and then you measure its terminal velocity when it's moving upwards with the electric field turned on this is what you actually see when you look through the microscope is that the tiny, tiny little drops look like tiny, tiny little white dots there. The, did we see on the last slide there was light shining into this this container and a microscope at the, at the side and they appear like little stars, little white drops. Uh, and then there's a graticule on the microscope so that as they fall uh, using a stopwatch, you can measure their velocity. Yeah, you can work out their velocity. So the drops appear as tiny little white dots. You choose a suitable drop uh, and then you can turn the field on and off and take measurements of its terminal velocity when it's falling without the field on and its terminal velocity when it's rising with the field turned on. Uh, the lines are the graticule on the microscope and then with a stopwatch you can time it and work out your velocities, your terminal velocities. Right, let's get into the maths of it then. So when the field is turned off, so this first diagram here, when the field is turned off uh, and it's moving at V1, so V1 here is when it's just falling uh, 
uh, and you've got its weight pulling it down and we have viscous drag okay it's like the the person who jumps out of a parachute and they reach terminal velocity so the air resistance is equal and opposite to their weight so it's in equilibrium a dynamic equilibrium the drop is falling at a terminal velocity v1 and the forces acting on it are equal and opposite now we turn on the electric field okay and now uh, very quickly very soon it reaches a, another terminal velocity v2 going upwards uh, and it's being pulled upwards by the electric force f equals eq where e e the field strength is v over d and so we can measure v we know the distance between the plates we know the field strength and q is the charge on the drop uh, and then that is equal and opposite to mg plus the viscous drag again yeah the air resistance so now the drop is moving upwards with a new velocity v2 and again the forces here balance this viscous drag what do we know about that well stokes law now stokes law says that for a spherical object a sphere like our little drop of oil of radius r uh, moving through a viscous fluid which is air uh, at a velocity v then the viscous drag is given by f equals six pi eta r v yes so f is the viscous drag that's our air resistance six pi eta this is the the greek letter eta yes uh, and that's the viscosity of air in this case yeah the the fluid that it's moving through r is the radius of the drop and v is the velocity of the sphere so uh, we're going to use stokes law uh, to get an expression for the viscous drag which we'll use in our equations okay when the drop is falling uh, at its terminal velocity with the field off so mg is 6 pi eta r v1 uh, if the drop is moving upwards yeah with the field turned on then uh, again remember the equilibrium thing mg plus 6 pi eta r v2 equals the electric force qv over d uh, there's another equation that we're going to use and that's just basically density is mass over volume the volume of a sphere is four thirds pi r cubed so the mass will be uh, the density of the oil times four thirds pi r cubed where r is the radius of the drop now there's different ways of doing this and I'm going to talk about a couple um, look at these numbers first of all two metal plates 11.6 millimeters apart remember i said that they're, they're pretty close together you know 11.6 millimeters that's uh, uh, just over a centimeter uh, the oil drop falls in the gap between the plates the density of the oil we know 910 kilograms per meter cubed um, it's all done at constant temperature all very controlled by the way Millikan was very very careful about this the viscosity of the air at a particular temperature is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5 kilogram per meter second uh, the oil drop so first of all the oil drop is measured to have a terminal velocity of 3.8 times 10 to the 5 meters per second when falling freely so that is v1 remember we call that v1 little v1 uh, then when we turn on a pd of 715 volts uh, the oil drop moves upwards uh, with this velocity and that v2 that's our moving upwards velocity with the field turned on so this is a big number crunching question if you want to have a go at it by yourself uh, I'll show you another way of doing it on the next slide but have a go at this so first of all combine the two equations up above to get an expression for the mass of the drop yeah so you just eliminate r basically uh, and then work out the mass of the drop 
When you know the mass of the drop, you can work out the radius of the drop. Uh, and then when you know the radius and the mass, you can work out the charge on the drop. So do you want a pen paper calculator? Have a go at this. Might take you a while. I'll show you the answer in three, two, one. And there you go. Using those numbers. Uh, and this is the value of Q that we end up with. 4.9 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Looks to me about three electrons. I think three electrons would be 4.8, wouldn't it? Now, in the exam, uh, it's very likely that what you might be asked to do is to get an expression either for Q, uh, Q equals mg into V1 plus V2 over electric field strength times V1, or um, this other expression, uh, V2 over V1 equals, uh, and then just bung in the numbers, okay? Uh, do your best. If you don't actually arrive here, you will pick up quite a few marks kind of on the way. Do your best. How you actually get that is if I say that the Stokes law, uh, instead of all this six pi eta stuff, if I just say it's K times V1, uh, and then in the second one, K times V2, and then eliminate K and solve for Q. You get the first expression. And then the second expression is just the first one rearranged. Uh, I've made a little note here that actually there's a bit more to it. There always is. Uh, our derivation didn't include any buoyancy force on the drop. Um, there's other corrections for Stokes' law at when it's not traveling very fast and stuff. But anyway, this is what you're, you are likely to be asked to do in an exam is possibly derive. I've seen a past paper where it asks you to come up with this expression here. So Millikan spent years perfecting his experiment. You know, he started using water like water vapor instead of oil drops, but then it kept evaporating and all, all kind of nightmare. And he took eventually he got it all working. He took thousands of measurements and he got lots of values for different charges on the oil drops. Now, the important thing, as far as we are concerned, is this here. Eventually, the smallest value of Q is that. Uh, these Americans didn't use coulombs. They had some other weird units. But in SI units, yeah, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. That was the smallest value. And then all of the other values were multiples of that. So what do we conclude? We conclude that charge is quantized. Charge comes in little packets. Yes. And these little packets are the charge on an electron. And that is, uh, well, minus 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. That's the smallest charge. Okay.